Welcome back to that Fight Card Podcast with the latest and most in-depth news in the MMA community. Hosted by Spider. Hello, everybody. We are the Fight Card Podcast. Once again, this is Spider and Aaron Suarez right across from me. Bro, how are you, man? Doing good, man. Doing good. Just getting everything done <laughs> today. What's going on with you, man? No, no, not much, man. I know it's been a long week, man. I mean, a lot has <laughs> happened uh, just with, with life alone. I mean, of course, you, you worked uh, the, the whole week, you know, you, yeah, this oh, yeah. your day off. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, the holidays, man. Holidays are upon us, man. You already uh, done with your Christmas shopping, bro. Uh, no, not, not even close. Not Wait till the week <laughs> off, huh? Yeah, and yeah. be like, let's see what's left. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, see, we'll see on the 26th. No, no, for sure, man. I mean, I'm the same way, man. I wait till the week of, and I mean, like, like I tell people, I, you know, I give uh, my kids and my family gifts throughout the year, man. So it's yeah. just, come Christmas, I'm broke. So you know, they, they get they get hugs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. But uh, I went. I mean, we are here at the HOJ Academy, as always, man. Uh, we're actually in the lobby. You know, nobody's here today, so we're gonna take advantage of it. And um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, jump into the uh, UFC 269 card, man. Yeah. Now the, um, they had the. Uh, the face-offs yesterday, I know they, you know, they were doing a little Q&A with the UFC, and uh, you didn't get to catch any of it. No, I, I did it, man, yeah. Well, let me say, man, because on a lot of them, I know there was a lot of heat uh, in between fighters. I mean, of course, uh, there was some uh, trash talking, and um, some fighters were just saying it like it is, you know, not, not like Dominic Cruz, but, you know, they were, they were speaking <laughs> their mind, man. And, um, and let me ask you while I'm on that subject, man, the whole Dominic Cruz and DC, what do you take out of that, bro? Uh, Dominate, just shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, man. And it's up. Sh- shut up and fight, man. You know, DC's done quite a bit, you know, inside and outside the cage. I, I think he's a really smart mind when it comes to MMA and coaching and just anal- analytics, like just everything he's doing. And Dominic, I, I, he, I think it does come off as just, you know, having a just an ego and kind of, you know, I'm like, you're on the prelims now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've been riddled. Get on the main it. car and then we'll, we'll take your yeah. opinion up. And you know what? And I mean, that, of course, the guy has done you know enough for the sport. I mean, he's you know, he's fought a lot of tough guys, of course. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, I, I personally, man, I took it. I didn't take it offense to it because I mean, it wasn't towards me. But it's just something like if like if somebody were to come to me and say, "Hey, man, you know what? Let somebody else do this." And then, you know what? By all means, bro. They, yeah. As long as the other the other guy wants to do it for free, I'm game. You know, because yeah. hey, I ain't paying. But um. <laughs> But I mean, of course. I mean, it's something. It's kind of constructive criticism, but it's something that should be within the within the room. You know, it yeah. should be like, hey, man, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be doing that, or maybe we should do this. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, man, I think he was bad for it, man. I mean, I don't, you know, the guy spoke his mind, but sometimes, you know, it's not worth worth doing that. Yeah, it's. it's uh, I mean, we already had Stephen A. Smith doing a couple yeah. of events. Yeah. We don't, you know, yeah, that and that's just horrible in itself, right there. So. Oh yeah, you know everybody. Let's let's talk about him. You know, yeah. now, you know. But yeah, bro. But I just wanted to bring that up, man. Yeah. But the uh, the UFC 269 card, of course, uh, today is Friday, December 10th. Uh, December 11th is tomorrow. It's going down. This is going to be in Las Vegas at the uh, T-Mobile Arena. And uh, I w- I just want to go over the main card uh, just for the fact that you know a lot of the a lot of stuff yesterday got brought up and it was it was good for the sport. I would say. But um, I mean, starting off the uh, the main card, man, we're gonna have Sean o- O'Malley uh, taking on Raulian Paiva, and um, of course, you know the Brazilian and Raulian, man, he's a uh, 21 and three taking on Sean O'Malley, 14 and one. Um, one of the things that uh, Cody Garbrandt, of course, kept bringing up was that um, uh, Sean O'Malley himself hasn't faced like a good enough opposition for him to be taken seriously. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people can say that, man. I mean, of course, if you're in the U- UFC, you're in it for a reason. Yeah. I mean, whether you have a losing record or a winning record, um, you got to look at the people they're losing to or winning to, you know, mm-hmm. because it says it sp- speaks volumes. Yeah. But um, on this one, I mean, who do you have uh, winning this fight? Uh, I mean, you know, Sean said it before where he's just like, I'm, you know, I'm going to get paid the same regardless of who I fight. So, you know, I think he does tend to pick easier fights, and it's not so much uh, – Really, it doesn't feel like it's uh, he's trying to really work him way up. He's just trying to just maintain where he's at, uh, man. But with that being said, man, yeah, I mean, Sean has a lot of talent. He high IQ when it comes to his strikes. He he's long, I, and I think yeah, it's gonna be another uh, maybe second round finish for him. You know, uh, winning that fight. So yeah, so no, I, I like Sean in this in this bout. No, I, I feel the same way, man. I mean, I'm a huge Brazilian fan. Like I can always say, man. But I mean, uh, Sean O'Malley. I think he's gonna have the crowd behind him for one thing, and uh, I mean his technique. I mean, of course, he's, uh, the guy's obviously a great fighter or a good fighter. You know, working his way up. I mean, but um, 
but yeah, I think his reach is going to have a, you know, it's going to be this winning factor, I should say. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, uh, we both got uh, Sean O'Malley on this one. Uh, the next one up, it's going to be uh, Cara France. I mean, of course, he's fighting Cody Gar Garbrandt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, you know, France, of course, man, twenty-two and nine, taking on Cody at twelve and four. Um, I mean, we had talked about this on the um, the other episode, and I mean, Cody's dropping down weight from five yeah. eight, you know, be, uh, standing five eight to fighting uh, France, who's I think it's five five. Five five. So yeah. of course, you know, the reach is going to be a factor, man. Um, on this, honestly, because I think this is Cody's first drop to uh, one twenty five. Yeah. And sure. I think cardio and condition is gonna be a factor on this man and I see France getting the victory, man. I oh, mean do I you, do, do you? All right. Well shoot, that's where I'm gonna disagree with you, man. I think uh you know I get I out. Think, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it's gonna be uh you know, Cody just he just has really good power. He has really great power even at one thirty five. And for him dropping down to one twenty five uh, the fact that he's been able to kind of walk around close to about 125 already, you know, a couple of days before, you know, the actual weigh-in, I think that says a lot about what he's done to kind of, you know, transition to the to the lower weight class. Prepare himself. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I don't expect him to, you know, gain, you know, 20, 30 pounds or whatever. Uh, but, I mean, he's probably going to have a, a decent size on him uh, come fight night. And then, I mean, like I said, I mean, just the knockouts that he's had at 35, man, I think he's bringing that to 25 as well. So, uh, I don't think it'll be easy to knock out uh, his opponent, but I do think it's very possible. One, I think it's uh, likely to happen, uh, whether you know later in the rounds, probably second or third. But uh, yeah, it'll be a tougher, tra tougher transition for him, uh, just with that weight cut. And it seems like he uh, got past that, you know, fairly decently. So now we'll just kind of see uh, what he's bringing to 125, and hopefully, exciting and a lot of knockouts. No, I mean for sure, man. I mean the guy. You know, tough as nails, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 135, he fought a lot of tough dudes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the way. Well, that's what I got. I mean, 125. I mean, France. He is uh, ranked number six in the division with uh, Cody, uh, number 15, barely in the uh, top 15, you know, uh, roster. Yeah. But um, but we'll see, man. I mean, it's gonna be entertaining, exciting. I mean, you know, like I said, I see France. You know, picking picking him apart, using his cardio, move around, stick and move. And uh, eventually getting him tired, man. I don't see Cody cutting that much weight, man. I mean, like you said, he he might be walking around at 125. This, you know, today maybe maybe he's out there in the sauna right now, dropping the last 10, 15 pounds. Um, frame wise, the guy was huge, man. I mean, he yeah. overlooked, you know, his <laughs> opponent um, as far as height. But um, I, I think it's going to be conditioning, man, or, or a bad weight cut, should I say, man? But um, we'll see, man. I mean, it's happening tomorrow, so we'll we'll see. Um, we'll see after I get that that win, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, we're going up, bro. We're going up. Um, this is also on the main card, man. A welterweight bout. Uh, Jeff Neal, of course, you know, out of uh, Dallas, uh, taking on Santiago Ponsinibio, man. And um, on this, I, I saw them both. I mean, as far as that, they stood toe to toe yesterday. They did a little face off, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Jeff was a taller guy. I knew he had a reach on him, not by a lot, but he does have, have a reach advantage. Yeah. Um, but uh, his posture, man, I, I saw something in him that I was like, okay, that's Jeff from when he was fighting, trying to get up to the UFC. Yeah. And that for me, that's a good thing, man, because that just says how hungry he is. It's yeah. just kind of like, you know, a lot of the uh, the champions, they say like every fight, it's, I, I, make, I feel like I'm fighting for the dub. Yeah. Like I'm not a champion until after the bout. And I kind of think that's a mentality at that level that you need to have because – if you're just going in there, oh, it's just another fight, then, you know, that's kind of where you lose already mentally. Yeah. But, um, you know, Santiago, of course, the guy is 28-4. and four. I mean, he's got his whole uh, home country, Argentina, behind him. And, uh, I mean, obviously a fan favorite, I would say, uh, to, to an extent. But um, how do you see this fight, bro? Uh, man, I mean, I think, uh, you know, Jeff is going to – I think he's going to come out. I mean, uh, you know, with everything that he's – got going on as far as you know his last couple of fights uh he showcased you know quite a bit uh with the with the, with the magnet fight i think he, he ended up losing that fight um you know but I mean, there's a lot of things that he, he wasn't able to do i guess last time he really kind of you know pushed the pace and I, so i think this time yeah with what you're looking at as far as like the look that he had at the, at the weigh-in um or the, stare, at the stare downs i'm sorry if you will the press conference um yeah man i mean ha having Having known that he probably didn't put everything that he needed to in that last fight, going into this fight, so it's like, hey man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something, right? I can't, you know, you look at your last performance and it, you know, wasn't necessarily the best, but it wasn't, you know, uh, wasn't necessarily, you know, bad either. 
Right. So going into this fight, man, yeah, like the mentality looked like it probably changed a little bit. And I, and I see him coming out, man. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to go all three rounds. I think it's going to be a hard fight, you know, uh, going back and forth. But uh, I think it's with, yeah, Jeff uh, beating him up, you know, hitting him to the body, hitting him to the head, uh, and really just kind of controlling it from, from start to finish. You know, I think doing enough in every round to kind of outpoint him. And not that he's uh, just trying to win by points, but I just think uh, his opponent's going to, Bring up enough to, yeah. to to actually make it a fight. Yeah, exactly. No, no, for sure, man. I mean, it, it, I mean, I can see Jeff getting a knockout, but I mean, at the same time, yeah. I mean, Santiago, no doubt. I mean, the guy's, you know, been fighting for for a good while, man. So yeah. he he knows what to do and what not to do. So he's experienced. But um, but yeah, man. So you would say he's a uh, Jeff by decision? I got yeah, I got Jeff by decision, man. I think it's and it's yeah. Very decisive. No, right on, man. I mean, of course, the guys from Texas, man. So of course, we're always pulling for the uh, the Texas guys, the mm -hmm. Texas fighters. Um, next bout, man, we're going to go up, and it's going to be Anan Amanda Nunez, man, out of Brazil, the champ. She yeah. is a hundred. She's actually the uh, fan favorite, I would say, going into this, yeah. man. Oh, I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. I mean, I, I didn't look at the, uh, as far as the uh, the betting odds. Yeah. But um, it's, it, it, she's kind of like an in-between because it, she gets a lot of fans, and then she gets a lot of hate. Yeah. Uh, either way, I think she gets a lot of... Um, it's good because you know people are always talking about her whether it's good or bad mm -hmm. but uh i mean she is a champion for a reason man and uh juliana peña man i mean i know you had her by uh oh, yeah. via her wrestling right on the yeah. on the last episode man uh, are you still sticking with that i'm still sticking with it man I, so with this one man i actually saw the the uh, the fight episode right, right. Like they do beforehand and uh man the the, the scene that was kind of like just real like like damn dude, like it was kind of <laughs> gave me some goosebumps was uh you know, Juliana, she's on the treadmill, and, you know, she's walking, or she's doing her thing, and then she has a TV in front of her, and it's just showing the highlights of of, uh, of Amanda Nunes, you know, going through Holly Holm, going through Ronda. And it's oh, like, nice. Yeah, so I'm just like, man, like, you know, she has this mentality about her. She has this thought about her that, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the person that's going to beat her. And, you know, when you have that type of mentality, when you have that feeling that, you know, she's like, I haven't been given a shot. I've been calling her out for years and years and years. And now you're finally... Yeah, in the position to get that shot. Yeah, like so, you know, Juliana, she has nothing to lose. You know, I, you know, this is everything for her to gain. You know, it, even if she does come out and you know she's on the losing side of it, you know, she's getting the opportunity to do what she said she wanted to get done. And I think, um, you know, uh, stylistically, yeah, I think she's a bad matchup for Amanda Nunes. I think uh, when you had you know Ronda Rousey, you know, she was just coming back off that defeat with uh, with uh, was it Holly Holm, right? And yeah, Ronda's good on the ground, but she didn't have any type of wrestling. You know, she couldn't really yeah. do anything. And then so just Amanda just air her up from the outside. Um, you know, and then, of course, you know, Amanda beat the crap out of Misha Tate. Um, and Misha, she had some wrestling, but she was, like, trying to stand up with Amanda. And she, oh, yeah, like you, know, you said, and, that's, and that, her, that's a no-no. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so, uh, and then, of course, when she when she fought Holly, man, I mean, she just outstruck Holly home. So, you know, there's a lot of things that those ladies bring to the – you know, division, but I think, yeah, Juliana presents something that's completely different. I think her mindset is probably just a little bit tougher. I think her wrestling is going to be there. And then on top of that, I think she does have a big chip on her shoulder, uh, thinking that, you know, like everybody's choosing her and she's right. like, no one's in my corner. She she moved gym. She's up in, was it, Chicago now? Yeah. So, you know, I think she's getting what, uh, what she needs to get done. And, and uh, man, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I And I think she's going to. I'm thinking she's gonna pull it off, and it's gonna it's gonna rock the whole division. And I think uh, it, opens, it creates a lot of opportunities, man. It, like it really if she does. gets that win, I mean, she I like that for the fact that yeah, yeah, it does. And then and on top with Amanda, you know, she it's not so much I, I think her pers personality. I think the way she holds herself, she can come off as cocky and arrogant a little bit. And I mean, she's rightfully so. She's been the only two-time champ, you know, two-division champ yeah. that's defending both titles. You know, and now she's just like, hey, just bring me contenders. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah stack you know, them up. Yeah, to a point, she really doesn't need to fight. She needs to get all these other women to get to her level. So uh, I think it would be really good for the sport if uh, Juliana pulls this off. No, for sure, man. I mean, I know uh, Amanda, I mean, they're both talking about, I mean, they both have kids. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's one of the things for me, man. I guess, I mean, obviously it's different for a woman because she is the mom and she kind of yeah. nurtures the kids more while – you know, we're we're in the living room watching TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, but I mean, it's just, it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know what? Because they, you kind of get 
broken in in a, uh-huh. in a perspective like now you're a homebody kind of you know, because you have kids now you got to be mom you got to be dad you got to be yeah. and for that man I, I don't know if that's going to play a part in the fight i mean you know if, if amanda loses which she won't um <laughs> you know i i think it, it'll be good for her in the sense that she can stay home she can be like yeah. okay you know what i'm gonna take two three months off and stay home and, and be a parent yeah you know and um but we'll see man i mean i have amanda Winning this, I mean, I, I really do, man. I think her stand-up is going to be uh, her key. You know, yeah. she's going to be able to, uh, you know, stuff her takedowns or maybe even work the knee. I know when it comes to fighting a wrestler, you don't really want to do kicks because, of course, you know, yeah. getting your leg caught and getting thrown down. But um, I see Amanda finishing this in the second round, man. I mean, via, via TKO or KO. But uh, like you said, you know, Peña's coming in with her, a strong wrestling base. I mean, she has the uh, technique to take her down, to put her against a cage, do some cage wrestling, maybe take her down. Um, but yeah, Amanda by by second round, bro. All I'm right, gonna call man. it, man. All right, man. Yeah, no, um, you know, yeah. I mean, Amanda, she hit hard. I yeah. mean, she's training at the uh, was the ATT, yeah. you know, big big school. So you know, hopefully, yeah, she's getting the uh, you know the one on one that she needs and stuff like that. And, and she hasn't really lost focus on it. You know, being a new mother, um, you know, along with 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 her partner, it's like um, yeah, hopefully she. You know, focus and stay on track, and, and I'm sure you know both ladies have. So it's uh, it'll be it'll be a good fight, man. I can, I'd like to see it go. I think all three rounds. That'd be interesting, man. Uh, yeah, think, if it yeah. does go to uh, which ooh championship rounds, yeah, man. Which, or, oh, sorry, yeah, all five rounds, and uh, which is where Amanda's kind of lost it a little bit, and I think that's where uh, you know Juliana with that wrestling kind of putting that pressure on it, and yeah. you know, I mean, I've always enjoyed wrestlers when they're when they're fighting because of mentality and, and how they're able to just push and push and push and uh to the point where they can end up kind of just breaking uh some of these people just mentally like that man oh yeah man because i mean they, they put you against a cage and you can't move man that sucks you know <laughs> mentally you're like fuck you know what am i doing here man yeah. so i mean i've had a couple of fighters man i know um uh, you know, here locally, man. I mean, yeah. you're seeing the opponents fighting a wrestler, and this, the, the, you know, he gets out wrestled the whole fight, and you're thinking, shit, you know. And yeah. if, if they're active on top, of course, the referees keep it going because they're active. But I mean, when the wrestler takes you down and there's no action, of course, they get stand up, and then you know, it's bad, round for the, you know, it's pretty bad for the wrestler, man, because yeah. the yeah. striker, of course, looking for uh, for the head. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, if it goes five rounds, dude, I mean, that's gonna be interesting, man, because yeah, yeah I mean, if you know, cardio, man, whoever has the uh, best cardio going into round th- after round three, if it goes to after round three, th- the winner, man. But um, but yeah, Amanda News, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, <laughs> but but man, okay, that's a co main event, and of course, you know, it's, it is gonna be for the 135 pound weight division, and um, the main event, man. I mean, of course, Charles Oliveira uh, taking on your uh, your old uh, opponent opponent in uh, <laughs> Dustin Poirier. And um, I mean, is this one the same? You're sticking with the same? I'm, yeah, I'm sticking with the same, man. Uh, you know, I think uh, I think Dustin's gotten so much better just with that inside boxing. I think uh, uh, one thing that was kind of brought to my attention as well is just uh, kind of like the mental aspect of Dustin as well. Uh, when it comes to uh, after he lost to McGregor and he came, and he got clipped and he got hit or whatever, that that changes you a little bit, you know, because now it's like, okay, well, can I? You know, get in there and really just bang it out right. with somebody, and then, and then of course he beats him. You know, um, you know a few matches later, and it's just like, you know, now he's like, okay, I can take the hits, I can do this, I can you know get in there. So I think uh, we're probably gonna see the cleanest Dustin we've seen, man. Uh, I think in a long time, and you know, uh, so I think he's probably gonna be the bigger guy. Which, I, from what I'm understanding, he also might be moving up a weight class. Yeah, he's I talking about think. the uh, welterweight division, man. You know, so you know, hopefully he's he's still focused on on this division and, and, you know, taking out, you know, Charles. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm looking at the guys side by side. I know they're closely matched. I know they're, you know, as even as possible. But I just don't see something in Charles that, you know, that's in Dustin right now. I think uh, Dustin has a little bit more dog in him. I think he has a little bit more grit to him. Uh, you know, when the, when the fight does get bloody and tough or whatever, like, where's Charles going to be at? Right. Uh, but, I mean, at the same time, man, I mean, Charles, he's the champion of one of the hardest divisions <laughs> yeah, in all bro. of MMA, right? Not just in the UFC, but anywhere. Uh, so, I mean, it's like that says a lot to his credit as well. So, uh, I mean, you never know. I mean, who, I mean, you look at the roster from top to bottom, you wouldn't have thought Charles would have been the champion. Oh, yeah. You see, and, and the, the whole time, man, I mean, the guy, I mean, he's fought some tough dudes. Yeah. And he, he's got some, some great knockouts. And, I mean, he, he broke the uh, UFC record for most submissions. Mm-hmm. 
And I think he's going to add another one to this uh, tomorrow, man. Three, okay. Yeah, I see him winning via submission, bro. I think he'll yeah. be able to pepper him, take him, um, take, get the takedown, yeah. and uh, and lock something in. I mean, I, I, you know, even yesterday, you know, during the uh, the press conference, man, I saw Dustin, and Dustin was was he was well spoken and he was calm and he was collect, and and I like that about the guy, yeah. because you know he's not not to say he's not worried, but he knows what he has and he knows what yeah. he needs to do, man. So I mean, it's going to be. It's good. For me, honestly, man, if uh, if uh, Charles Oliveira doesn't get the uh, submission, man, it can be one of those technical bouts that maybe maybe goes five rounds and goes yeah. to decision. I mean, we, we don't know. But um, if it goes to the ground, man, I mean, I, I'll give it to uh, Charles Oliveira, man, and uh, his reach. I mean, he does have a reach. Um, you know, whether uh, Dustin will be able to outbox him and, and move around, get some head movement. You know, he does have the uh, technique, man, but we'll, we'll see. So, I mean, what round, man? Let me ask you that. Uh, man, um... You know what? I, I would take I would take Dustin in four. In four? I would take him in four, man. I think uh, by that time it's kind of I think he's put the pressure on him. I, I think he's done enough damage. I think uh, he's going to hit him a little bit harder. And uh, by that fourth round, you know whether it's submission or, or I'm sorry, whether it's uh, you know Charles has been trying to get the submission or not. Uh, when they if they, I think if they do go to the ground, I think that's where Dustin's going to be able to kind of posture back up, get that get that ground and pound. And then Fox will also, you know, work on, on getting back to his feet. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I'm going to go with Dustin in the, in the fourth round by uh, by stoppage. Man, that's that's I can see that. I mean, I honestly can, man. I mean, the guy does have the uh, the tools. And uh, we'll see, man. I mean, of course, like we said, this is going to be for UFC 269 going down tomorrow. Um, we'll see where we we, uh, we fall as far as our uh, our picks, <laughs> man. But um, yeah. I'll be watching. I know uh, Rod Dog Saloon here in San Antonio is having the um, – the fight party. So if you're in the area, Nacogdoches and 410, uh, address is going to be on our page and our, our Facebook group. And uh, for those watching, man, or listening, you know, this is the Fight Car Podcast. Once again, this is Spida, Aaron Suarez, as always. always uh, did you want to finish up with anything on this one, bro? Uh, no, you know what, man? On this one, man, um, when it comes to, you know, this UFC, man, it's the last one of the year, guys. You know, before we close out, I mean, they have a really good card from, from top to bottom. There's a lot of things happening, and uh, you know, 2021 was a pretty decent year, right? Oh, yeah. uh, it could always could always be better, but man, I'm just excited now that going into next year, we're gonna have even more crowds, you know, at the events. You're gonna probably have to have uh, more uh, local events, regional events. Like everybody's kind of getting back on their feet a little bit, man. So I think a lot more opportunities are coming around, and uh, yeah, man. I mean, take you know, take this time, watch this last card of the year, and, and go from there, man. And, and, and hopefully that MMA gets brought up uh, even more so in 2022. And let me ask you this to finish this off, bro. Say um, say Dustin gets the win. Okay. He's a, the champion. Say he moves up to a welterweight. Do you see him getting an immediate title shot? Man, I would like for him to fight maybe the one or two, or the, 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 the contender, or maybe the number, you know, number three. You know, before getting a title shot, but I mean, usually that's kind of the rule, right? It's you know, if you're the champion, you're yeah, a champion up. versus champ. You know, it's usually champ versus champ. And, and uh, okay, well, let me ask you this, man. He gets his, <laughs> you know, he goes to the main event. He gets to fight Usman. Who yeah. who do you see winning that fight? Oh man, uh, I think that's. I, I you know, I I'd like to say Dustin, man, but I I think Usman. I think he, I think Usman takes it there, man. Yeah, bro, that's a whole different animal, man. Yeah, he's completely different. It's like a, you know, to me, it's like a. You know, just a tough version of Charles Oliva. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you know it's you know again the guy has you know really good wrestling. He's he's showing that he can knock people out now. Yeah. That he's he's tough. He has it all. So I think him moving. I think Dustin moving up to welterweight man. I think he'd be better suited to maybe reengage that Colby Covington. No, oh, yeah, and they were talking about that yesterday you know, too, uh, man. So then you got then you got Andy Diaz. Yeah. You know, then you got Conor McGregor who's walking around about 190 right now, so it's like, you know, a lot of opportunities, a man. Lot, a lot of different yeah. fights that you could see at 170 that I'd like to see. No, well, we'll end it with that, bro. But uh, like I said, man, we, this is the Fight Car Podcast. Uh, we are here in San Antonio, Texas. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and uh, as always, man, follow up. Until next time.